In this video, we will discuss the time reversal operator in quantum mechanics. According to Wigner's theorem, physical symmetries in a Hilbert space can be represented mathematically either by unitary operators or by anti-unitary operators. The time reversal operator is a common example of an anti-unitary operator. So first of all, let's recall the definition of an anti-unitary operator. An anti-unitary operator is both unitary and anti-linear. Unitary means that the inner product of two states remains the same after a transformation, and anti-linear means that complex numbers get complex conjugated. But why does the time reversal operator have to be an anti-unitary operator? To see this, let's take a look at the Schrodinger equation. Under a time reversal, psi of t goes to psi tilde of t tilde, where t tilde is simply minus t, and psi tilde could, in principle, be a completely different function than psi. If we apply t on the whole equation, we get i h bar d over d t tilde psi tilde of t tilde being equal to h psi tilde of t tilde, assuming that the Hamiltonian does not explicitly depend on time. If we now change the time derivative back to the usual time t, we get a minus sign, such that the whole equation looks like a complex conjugated version of the original equation. And indeed, if we claim that psi tilde of t tilde is exactly the same as the complex conjugate of the original function of psi of t, then we get back the initial Schrodinger equation and have confirmed that time reversal is a valid symmetry of the Schrodinger equation. In accordance with our definition, the complex conjugation is both unitary and anti-linear, so it's a good representation of time reversal for this system. Time reversal is also sometimes called reversal of motion. To see why, let us look at the following example. Suppose two objects are separated by a large distance, and that they are attracted by some force, for instance the gravitational force. So as time passes, they will move closer and closer, until they are almost colliding with a huge velocity. If this process is symmetric under time reversal, then the same process going back in time should also be possible, or in other words, should be a valid solution to the equations of motion. But if we start with two objects really close together, and they are still attracted by the same force, they will just collide instantly, won't they? The solution to this puzzle is that in order to perform a true time reversal, we also have to reverse their velocity and momentum. So the initial setup is that they are close together, but if you remember the previous system, at that point the objects had a large velocity vector going towards each other. After a time reversal, these velocities must now point in the opposite direction. So even though the forces still point inwards, their initial velocities will lead them apart. We can summarize the time reversal operator via these relations that show how certain operators transform under a time reversal operation. While position stays the same, momentum gets reversed. And since angular momentum is a combination of position and momentum, it is also odd under a time reversal operation. The quantum mechanical version of this concept of reversal of motion can be shown by using the time evolution operator u. Consider the operator u of t2 and t1, which takes a wave function at time t1 to the time t2. The action of the time reversal operator performs a complex conjugation, which means that this expression is equal to u of t1 t2. This operator takes a wave function at time t2 to the time t1, which describes the opposite motion as before. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.